welcome in standing waves. Not a super crazy topic with regards to mathematics, okay, behind this physics topic, but trying to understand standing waves if you've never seen them is not always the easiest thing. So I'll try to do it both through the simulations that I see on the web, which are kind of useful, and I'll also try to explain kind of the math behind it and some of the equations that you see here and what do they mean. So we're gonna talk about a few things. So the difference between a node and an anti-node in these standing waves, the fundamental frequency, okay, first harmonic or nth harmonic, for instance, and how it relates back to overtones. This is more on the music side, not that it will be a important item with regards to this video. What happens with these standing waves, both from the viewpoint of having two fixed ends or two free ends, and in those instances, we can kind of measure, okay, between the actual length, okay, of, for instance, a rope or a string that we have, and then also the wavelength, okay, of the waves that are carried through. And then also finally, okay, media with one free end and one fixed end. So all of these are a little bit different. So by the way, okay, so as you're going through in here, the main definition of a standing wave doesn't seem actually too complicated if you do understand okay, the waves that are passed in between free ends and fixed ends and then how they're reflected. I'll put up a link up above there because you should understand okay, what those mean, meaning free end, open okay, or fixed end that you have um, and then also the reflection between those okay, within a media. So I'm assuming that you have either watched that video or you're familiar with that item. So let's jump in. So when you're talking about standing waves, it is literally the appearance that the wave is actually standing, which means that it's not technically moving or progressing through from one end to another, almost like a pulse that's passing through. It's more a wave that just kind of goes up and down, up and down without this notion okay that it is actually progressing so it has an appearance of this and that appearance turns out to be stationary now it is caused by the interference so an interference means that there is more than two waves so there is an incoming wave and then there's also a reflected wave from the opposite end and when you are generating waves there's going to be a reflection and if you have a reflection, that means you have an incoming wave and a reflected wave and they meet together. Soon as they meet together, now that's an interference between waves. And therefore that incoming and reflected wave will be superimposed. That means they will be adding each other. Okay, and that addition is going to create this idea of a stationary wave, right? So as you're going through. So, that's what happens, okay? So you have an incoming wave and then you have a reflected wave and they are superimposed on top of each other, all right? Now, this does not happen for all frequencies, you know? So it does have to actually hit a very key frequency, which we typically call the fundamental frequency or the first harmonic, where this notion appears, and for other frequencies, you may not see it. Now, any multiple of the fundamental frequency or the first harmonic, so if you multiply it by you know, two, multiply it by three, multiply it by four, these are actually called first harmonic, second harmonic, third harmonic, and so on, you will have this appearance of a standing wave. So now, what exactly you know, do I mean by this standing wave? So James Dunn, who I'm gonna borrow his okay, kind of simulation for this, and I'll put up all links to all the references I've used in the description. Please do hit on them okay, and try to support them as well okay, by just watching okay, their videos or the sites okay, that I reference back. So what James has done is he's actually simulated this with you know a string that you have and if you hit the right frequency it's going to have this appearance okay of a stationary wave so I'm going to show this right here in a slow little clip and I'm going to not steal his thunder so I'll only show it for a few seconds you can watch the link from the description so that wave that you see now, because it's moving rather quickly, it does appear like it's stationary, right? And to be honest with you, it kind of probably appears kind of like this, right? Where you would have, this is the two fixed, so this is gonna be the two fixed ends, 
and then it just looks like it's just stationary and it's just kind of flickering up and down. Now, what really happens, okay, within these particular waves, now this can be slowed down, okay, and I'll point this out again in slow motion, and you notice that it doesn't have that flicker. It actually nicely captures almost like a, a little wave, okay, that is passing through there. And that's really neat. Now, let's talk about this a little bit further and explain what a node is, what an anti-node is, okay? And then as we hit these frequencies, you know, any multiple frequency, okay, nicely captures these and they start to have an appearance. So this would have been appearance of N is equal to one. So that's the first kind of harmonic or fundamental frequency that we have. Okay, this is, would have been N is equal to two, so that's kind of the second harmonic, so it would appear kind of like this. This would have been the third harmonic, so it would look like this, okay? And this is the fourth harmonic, and so on. So you'll notice that you know these patterns of waves okay, appear and they, it, they flicker up and down. And this is what I mean by this. So I'm going to kind of show you, this would have been the first harmonic. You have two fixed ends right here. Okay, and it's rather slow so that you can catch it. Okay, and you can see it just going up and down, up and down. So let's understand kind of the concepts. Where is this coming from? What do we mean by superposition? Why does this appear that it's just almost like, you know, a wave just, just kind of standing still and it's going up and down. It's not really moving to the left or to the right. That's the concept of the standing wave. And again, I'll put a link to this so you can play around with this, hit all the buttons. So I'm going to show you that this green kind of up and down motion is caused by actually two separate waves, one which is incoming, okay, and then one which is reflected. So now if I remove the green one right here, so you'll notice that this is really what's happening. You have these two particular waves passing each other by, and when they're interfering with each other, they superimpose. And when they superimpose, we add them together, and that's what we obtain, which is really cool to be able to see. That is the first harmonic. Now, some explanation. What are nodes? So nodes are the appearance that a particular particle appears stationary and it's not moving around, kind of the equilibrium point of the wave. So those, in this case, would have been the two end points. One fixed end, one at the other fixed end as well. Notice that they're not really moving. It's almost like someone is holding them down, hence fixed ends. The anti-node is the area where the particle actually moves the most. So that is in this case in the middle, okay? So that particular particle goes all the way up and all the way down. So now it's kind of heading back upwards. And this is the first harmonic that we have, and it's called the fundamental okay, frequency within. And now, if you would change the frequency slightly, okay, you wouldn't necessarily get this appearance okay, where the two ends were fixed. However, if you take this frequency and now you multiply it by two, so that's called the multiple frequency, and multiplying it by two would be called the second harmonic, now what you will notice is, okay, I'm going to turn this off, okay, I'm going to turn these back on, and I'm going to increase the harmonic there, okay? So now notice this looks kind of funky, okay? I don't know what's happening. These waves are just passing by, but when you add them together really nicely, this is what happens. And notice we're back to stationary wave. It's fixed. You have now two nodes at the end. You have a node in the middle as well, so that one's not moving. And you have two anti nodes, okay? One on the left and one on the right, okay? That just goes up and down. This is the fundamental frequency multiplied by two or the second harmonic. This is also known as the first overtone on the music side. I'm not musically inclined, okay? I know maybe a little bit on the physics on the waves, but, okay, the actual, when we say the uh, first harmonic, okay, and then the second harmonic, overtones lag behind. So the second harmonic is the first overtone. And it's going to be the third harmonic, which I'm going to hit now next. That's how the third harmonic looks like. That would have been the second overtone, okay, et cetera, et cetera, as you're going through. So someone gives you fifth harmonic, that is the fourth overtone. It legs one behind. Okay, so now that you see how they're made, so they're made by incoming and 
kind of reflected waves superimposed on top of each other. And you can play this simulation as much as you like, okay, through the link that I'll put in the description. So I'm gonna pause this within, okay, and I'm gonna come back to it, okay, when I talk about two open ends, because these are two fixed ends that you have in there. All right, so let me return back in here. So the notion that you've just seen, so this is the first harmonic, you know, here's the second harmonic, this is the third one, the fourth one. Now you can kind of identify all the nodes. So the nodes would be the ones that are not moving. So in this case, okay, let me maybe the circle. So obviously you have the two ones at the end, and then you have one, two, and three in here. Okay, so that's what you have there. Okay, here's the node, here's the node, here's the node, and here's the node. Okay, your anti-nodes are always the peaks. Okay, so those are the points where they're moving the furthest away. Okay, um, these points really appear like they're not moving at all. They're literally stationary. Okay, because the super superposition at those points always cancels each other off. All right, so now we have all of this information. So nodes and anti-nodes, we have the fundamental frequency, which is the frequency that first stationary wave appears at, and then you have multiples of those frequencies. Those are called the nth harmonic, meaning second harmonic, third harmonic, etc. Your overtones leg one behind, so that's something you should know. And now I've just shown you media with two fixed ends. Now media with to free ends, which means those two are not actually fixed. They're allowed to kind of go up and down, okay, within there. They're gonna look ever so slightly. However, what is interesting is that for both of these cases, we can relate things back to the harmonic and relate back the length, okay? So that's the L, that's the length of the actual string or rope that you have. The N in here, so this means which harmonic we're talking about, first one, second one, third one, etc. Okay, so that length, notice it also appears in here, is related to the wavelength of the actual um, kind of wave as you're going through. So the wavelength that you have in here, notice it's wavelength divided by two, and then it's multiplied by this N. Now this, okay, if you're starting it off from the first one, notice that really, okay, if you're talking about this wave as a whole, this wouldn't complete a full wave. So a full wave would have been this and then still coming back, okay, and then it repeats again. So that's why it's lambda divided by two, okay, that you have in here because lambda, remember, is the wavelength, okay, in terms of the distance. So it's the full distance, okay, of one period that you have. And hence, that's going to be only half of a lambda in here. Now that's the first harmonic. The second one in here, well, so within here, so now notice what you have, you have a full one. So that would have been harmonic number two, okay? And that's a full wavelength. And what it relates back to is the actual length of the string or rope that we are utilizing, all right? Now this is both for two fixed ends and also for two open ends. Now, how do open ends look like? So if I go back in here, so this is really cool because I can go back in here, okay? And I can start playing it and notice that this is what we mean by an open end. Notice that those two ends are no longer fixed. They're just basically allowed to move. And it goes back to again, okay, if you have waves through a string, which has an open end or a fixed end within here. So this would have been as you're going through. So that's the first case. Okay, so let me go back in here. So as you're going in here, that's the first harmonic. Okay, this would have been the second harmonic. Okay, this is now the third harmonic, so notice it looks different. However, with regards to the equation and the length of the rope or string related to the wavelength, it's identical to two fixed ends. So that's really nice to be able to know, which means that this formula that we have in here, okay, actually captures both of these. So this is what you will have in terms of that. Now, the next item, what happens is, what happens when you have one fixed end and one free end? How do those actually look like? Well, in those situations, okay, within here, so that's a media with one fixed end and one free end that you have, the formula now changes. Now, I also wanted you to, re to remind yourself 
that, hey, wait a minute, okay, we can also, so this is the fundamental wave equation, so that is the frequency and your wavelength related together to the speed of the wave. So don't forget that you can always find out frequencies, okay, within here, and these are related between these particular variables. So you can add that in. So with these media with one free end and one fixed end, the formula now changes. So this, okay, is going to have this formula. And now that is different, okay, within here. Now, why does that happen? So let me scroll back down here, okay? I've kind of drew them out in here. So notice this would mean that this is the open end, this is the fixed end, so it stays there. So this end kind of goes up and down in here while this one remains fixed, okay? And now within here, notice that this is actually a quarter of a wavelength because we would need, so this would have been half a wavelength, okay? And then this would have been a full wavelength. So you're starting with lambda over four. And now as you are going to be switching the harmonic, so as you hit this frequency within, okay, now it's going to look like this. So now notice all of a sudden within here, this looks like it's three quarters, right? Okay, because we would need to finish this off in order to have one full one. So it jumps, okay, basically by two quarters, okay, or a half each time. So within here, this is first harmonic, Okay, notice again, this is an open end, which goes up and down. Okay, this is your fixed end, okay, which is fixed in here. And this would have been your second harmonic. This is your third harmonic within here. So notice again, open end, fixed end, okay, within here. Here are your nodes. So that's your node, that's your node. This is your empty nodes that are moving up and down. And this continues through. So if you try, okay, to show this, now I'm going to do this in this way, where one is fixed. Now, in this case simulation, they fix the one on the left, and then they're allowing the other one to move up and down, right? So that's what you would see in there. I'm going to increase the harmonic. Let me maybe remove the incoming and reflected one. So we just see this. So there you have it. So one is fixed, one is open, and they're moving it around, okay, as you're going through. So that is the concept of these standing waves. I hope that by the simulations that you've just seen, um, you can now start relating these back, okay, within here. And if you ever are asked for the calculations within here, so if you wanna know, for instance, with regards to a wavelength, or you wanna try to find it for a particular harmonic, you can certainly do so. And I will do a short video, okay, with a couple of examples illustrating these formulas within. I'll put the link up above there when it comes up, okay, you can see those examples. All right, so that is the introduction to these standing waves. I hope that you found this particular video useful, and thanks for watching. Bye, everyone.